Hi folks, I'm Ian Baker, the product specialist with Camping World, and today we're going to go over the 2018 Keystone Passport 239ML. This is one of my favorite non-slide bunk models. It weighs just over 4,000 pounds and has a ton of great amenities. This particular unit is in the driftwood interior, but if you don't like the color pattern, there is some other options available. Let's start off right over here. So one of my favorite things when manufacturers are laying out a floor plan is to give you a campsite dinette. And the reason is because when I'm sitting here and I'm having my morning breakfast, a morning cup of coffee, this is the view I want right here, out to my campsite. I don't wanna be looking out at my neighbors. So I love when they're able to do this. They've also changed the table. This is a late model 2018, what they call like a fall model. So they've made some changes in here. One of them is the table itself. You'll see rather than just have it, uh, you know, your standard table where it has the flanges, they have this guy right here. So this just kicks up and then it's attached into the wall right here. The reason I like that is it's a lot more stable. You know, a lot of times you get in the uh, dinettes and they're just wiggling all over the place. Not the case here. It's nice and sturdy, just as easy to make into a bed. Again, kick the leg up, pop it out. The table sits along these rails right here. You can see those. You'll then take the back cushions and put them on top and that will create your sleeping space. If you need to plug anything in while you're sitting here, maybe you need to work on a laptop or tablet, you will notice there's an electrical outlet right underneath the cabinets here, so it gives you that place to plug it in. And that's right next to the LED light. There is LED lights throughout the entire camper, which is nice if you're going boondocking because they don't put out near the heat and use a fraction of the power. If we take a look at the cabinets up top, you have a cubby hole right over here. Right next to that is our multimedia center. Uh, this unit controls the speakers in here as well as the speakers outside. It is Bluetooth capable and there's an HDMI port on there. So you have a couple different options of how to plug in different devices. You'll see the speaker control is right here. Inside, outside, or if you want both, you can do that as well. And then you have dual USB ports right above that. Moving over, if we take a look at the woodwork, this is something else they changed a little bit. They went to a little bit different style pole, which I like. It's kind of a nice, soft, um, you know, almost a transitional pole, kind of between your, um, your modern as well as your classics. A little bit different there. And then they have uh, different glass on here as well. And again, slightly different cabinetry, different color. But overall, I really like it. When we open it up, you can take a look right in there. You can see you have some nice storage space. And then over next to that, you have the uh, TV. Now this is on a swing arm mount, so you can swing this around, be able to watch it from the sofa. I'll show you where that is a little bit later. Right here is your thermostat for your heat. This one does have a roof mounted 13.5K BTU AC, uh, but the controls for that are on the AC unit itself. But if you need to, uh, you know, if it's a cold morning, you want to kick the heat on, that's what that is for right there. Directly up above me here too, you see there is a vent. So, you know, if you don't want to turn on the AC, just want to open some windows and get some airflow, you can open that vent up and that will assist in that. If we take a look right in the back here, this is kind of the meat and the potatoes of the camper, right? It is a bunk model. And the thing I love about this is it's a double over double. You have the teddy bear bunk series on here. Take a look at the thickness of this mattress, folks. A lot of manufacturers out there, you know, they may still use a teddy bear bunk series, but it's about half the thickness here. I like they use the nice thick bedding so that way you, the kids will actually have a, a good night's sleep. Or maybe you have adult friends that are coming, you know, and hanging out. They need a place to crash. This will work for that as well as both of these beds can support 300 pounds. You'll see going across the ceiling rather than just using like your white tape strips, they have the wood going across, you know, it gives it a little nicer aesthetic piece, looks a little bit better. But my favorite part about the bunks here is the fact that both the top bunk and the bottom bunk have electrical outlets. Uh, it's really hard to find that, especially in anything that's under 30 foot, you know, without going to a bunkhouse. And I really love it. You know, I know that we go camping to try to get the kids away from electronics. But I'm telling you, on a rainy day, it, it saves my life numerous times. My two and a half year old, I can sit her up here with her tablet, you know, and she's content, she's happy, she's not running around my little camper screaming her head off. So uh, having, having those electrical outlets there can definitely save, save you from pulling your hair out. You'll see you have a window on both the top and bottom to let in a lot of natural light. In fact, the bottom one here actually has two windows and you have LED, uh, LED lights on both as well. Right underneath, I'll open this up for you. You can take a look in there, nice extra storage. My opinion, it's a great place to put uh, you know, some of the kids' clothes, or if you wanna put like a dirty laundry basket down there for the kids, you can do that. You know, duffel bag, whatever else, but that is a good extra storage spot. 
Right in here is the bathroom. I'll open it up. You can see right there is your foot flush lever toilet. You have plenty of leg room in front there. And over to the side is your tub shower. Again, in a bunk model, I do like having a tub. If you have a really small uh, child that's camping with you and you normally give them a bath, you're still able to do that here. Plus, it helps keep the water in the tub a little bit better. And you know, a lot of times with a shower and a curtain, it makes a mess of the floor. You won't have to worry about it in here. You also see the hand wand as well as some shelves there. And right up top is a skylight, which lets in a lot of additional daylight and also gives you some extra headroom. Right over on the other wall is our mirrored medicine cabinet with storage behind it as well as directly underneath it. And then under that, you have the sink top and vanity here with some additional storage under that. Right outside the bathroom, folks, take a look at this. This is another thing I really like about the passports in general and in this floor plan. This is a great versatile storage space. You see you have the hanging rod going across the top in case you want to hang clothes. You also have removable shelves, so you can take these out if you want or leave them in there, whatever you decide. But it really, again, allows you to customize it to what you're bringing with you. And the nice stylish door on the front here as well. When we start to move up a little bit, we move into the kitchen. Starting right here, you have the Dometic fridge freezer combo. If you take a look in there, you see you have plenty of space, a couple of crisper drawers down below. This unit does run off both propane and electric and also has automatic switchover. Right up top here is your microwave with your fully functional hood underneath, light and fan on there. And as you'd expect, that is placed directly over the cooktop. This one does have a Dometic three burner cooktop with the front one being high output. And then right underneath you have an oven in case you want to do some baking. If you take a, a look a little bit further up here, you can see you have nice prep space in between the cooktop and sink, and that's something I really appreciate, especially in a camper this size. More often than not, they either give you a single bowl basin and a two burner cooktop to give you the countertop space, or they cram them both together and you have to rely on the cooktop cover and the sink top covers. But they did give you this right here, and you'll notice directly above it, they put an electrical outlet. So great placement there, so you can have your coffee maker or toaster, whatever you want there. And then they did still give you the sink top covers here as well. Now both of these are cutting board quality. My recommendation is flipping them over and just using one side. That way all your knife marks are on one side here. So when you put it back on, you know, you still have nice looking sink top covers. But when I do take both of those off, you'll see larger bowl on the left, smaller one there on the right, and a high rise faucet to help wash and rinse dishes. Window directly behind the sink, as you would expect in pretty much every RV, and then LED light right here up top. Rounding out the top, you have additional storage there, so nice extra pantry storage. And right over here is your tank monitoring panel. You'll see everything, your batteries on there, as well as all three of your tanks, your pump, and your heater. Do note that it does have a DSI electric or a DSI water heater in here. It will run off both propane and electric. And the cool thing about that is you can turn both of those on at the same time for faster recovery. We take a look down below, we'll open this up for you. If you're thinking, oh man, it doesn't have drawers, think again, they're just covered, which honestly I think is pretty cool. It has a really nice uh, aesthetic to that piece as well. But full extension ball bearing drawers, you have two of those, which I like, because you have one for silverware, and then the other one for you know some of your bigger utensils, like your spatulas, things like that. And it's nice and heavy duty, you know, it's not just a super thin panel that the bottom's gonna bust out on you or anything like that. Some additional storage underneath, you have to contend with some water lines, but at least you do have storage there. And then moving over here, you see you have a little bit of storage up top, you know, probably good for some of your cleaning chemicals, things like that. But underneath, folks, look at that. It continues on over and that's a huge storage area, perfect for your pots and pans. So we come around to the side real quick here, you see the uh, curtain, so uh, right here you just undo the curtain, go ahead and close that off in case you have some additional privacy, uh, or need that additional privacy at night, you know, not a bad thing to have. Now what you may have noticed right up front is the Murphy bed. So for a lot of people, this is a deal breaker, right? Like, oh, I don't want a Murphy bed, you know, it's just too much of a hassle, too much of a pain. I'm telling you folks, in my opinion, I love Murphy beds. Yes, it does take an extra minute or two to set it up at night, but what you get in return is so worth it. And that is an extra seating area. In an RV this size with a double bunk and having the campsite dinette, having this couch is great because it gives you another place to sit. You can hang out right here, you can converse with people in the dinette, you can watch TV. You know, if you wanna buy like some of those little pods or something they have at like Walmart, you can put those here so you have something to put your feet up on. 
it just is a lot more comfortable and I like having an area to sit besides just the dinette in a camper. And it's not like you lose any storage here either. It is a, uh, this part right here is your standard jackknife sofa. We lift that up. You see you have all that storage underneath there. So you can store all your extra bedding or other large items. You know, if you want to bring a guitar or something with you, I had some people, uh, some customers that like to do that. You can certainly fit that underneath there as well. To make up the bed, what you do, as I mentioned, this is just a jackknife sofa. You kind of push these cushions down. It's nice and tight right there. And then this part right here, you have a lock on either side. The one side I already uh, undid just for demonstration purposes. We'll undo this side right here. Then you take it just like that. The front part actually goes right over it. And what you'll see is that it does lift up a tiny bit. And that's totally normal because when you uh, sit down on it, you know, and put the weight on it, it will push it down to the ground. And then just like that, you have this cushion here. Flip that cushion over. And there you go, folks. There's your bed. Just that simple. If you're one that, again, you don't want to make it up, you can leave it just like this. And at least that way you still have the option to use a couch in case you have guests that want to come visit. Right over here on the side, you will see you have uh, your mirrored wardrobe. You have a shelf up top as well as a hanging rod there. And then on the other side, right down below, you see you have kind of this nice little nightstand with an electrical outlet. So if you need to plug anything in, whether it's phones or CPAP machine, you can do it on that side of the bed. Now that we've seen the inside, let's take a look at some of the outside features on the Passport 239 ML. Right up front here are your two 20 pound propane tanks with the cover. Quite simple to get in there, just undo these two thumb screws, these will pull back like so, and then you can lift up the door giving you access to those tanks. Right behind that you see rails here for your battery, and then coming up the front here is black diamond plating which will help protect your front end from some of the rocks and debris that will get thrown up by your tow vehicle. You'll also notice there's a light over here in case you're hooking up or disconnecting at night. And right down below on the frame there, you will see a little black plug. That is actually solar prep. And that's a great thing to have, especially if you're planning on doing some boondocking or going where you don't have shore power. All you have to do is buy the portable panels, plug them in right there, and it will trickle charge your battery. Coming around to the side here, we'll open up the pass-through. You'll notice it has a covered hinge. That way your hinge won't get all rusted out. You don't have a bunch of rust coming down your door. Another thing I like is it's magnetic. For me, that's a big deal with the bunkhouse because chances are you'll probably have some kids and I can count more than once. We know with the plastic clips, the kids come up, they go to shut the compartment and rip that clip. They end up breaking the clip or even worse, ripping it out of the sidewall. Obviously not a problem with the magnet here. If we take a look inside the pass-through, you can see the aluminum framing. You know, that's uh, reassuring. You know that this is a very well-built unit. It does have your laminated sidewalls on here. Nice, big, open pass-through. And I like the fact that you have a same size door on both sides. So no matter what you put in here, you're able to retrieve it on the other side. And it is a wide door. So you can put in your big chairs, grills, things like that. And then you'll also see there's a light there in case you are accessing anything at night. Making our way back a little bit further, you see the power awning here. Folks, if you've never used a power awning, you're going to love it. You literally just touch and hold a button to roll it out. Same thing to go right back in. And you have an LED light strip there underneath. Now, I have had some people when we're talking about power awnings that say, you know, but Ian, I heard, you know, they're not as sturdy as your, as your regular standard awning. And you know what? You're absolutely right. But the great thing about a power awning is if a storm's coming and you're leaving, it takes you five seconds to put it in. You know, you don't have to stake it down. So it definitely has a big advantage there. Uh, getting into the camper is simple. You have two steps, foldable steps, nice and easy. You have a grab handle here as well, just in case you need, uh, you know, that extra support. Underneath that awning, you see two outside speakers. Those are connected to that multimedia center and inside. But as I had mentioned, that unit is Bluetooth capable. So if you want to sit out here underneath your awning with your smartphone and, you know, play music from your phone, you can certainly do that. And what you'll also notice, if you take a look at this side, folks, you don't have any vents underneath your awning here. So all this right here is great usable camp space. And that's something that's very important to me. You know, I don't want a hot vent blowing on me when I'm trying to sit down and relax. So I, I really enjoy having a clean camp side like this. We take a look down below. 
you will see the uh, the wheels on here are aluminum alloy. That's a standard on here. You know, again, to get aluminum alloy wheels, especially on a camper that's uh, nice and short like this and just over 4,000 pounds is pretty tough to do. The great thing about these rims, not only do they look great today, but they will continue to do so for years to come because aluminum doesn't rust. And if you notice, it also looks like they're a little bit further apart than normal, and that's because they are. It utilizes what they call a load equalization axle system, which essentially is a spread axle system. And the reason that's uh, nice to have is it helps reduce sway. The wider your wheelbase, the less the unit wants to sway on you. So it's a little bit easier to tow. Right here is your electrical outlet. Need to plug a couple things in. There's a spot to do it. My favorite part about an outside kitchen is this right here, and that is the outside refrigerator. You can store, you know, ketchup, mustard, relish in there, uh, pop, you know, for myself. I have a couple beers when I go, so I can put those in there too. That way I don't have to constantly walk in and out of the camper, trapes some mud through the whole thing. Just grab what I need and good to go. Right up top here, you also notice you have some extra storage, so a good place for solo cups, paper plates, you know, plastiware, things like that. And then right here, Take a look at this. So this is a pretty innovative system too. You undo that lock, you, you know, once you're there, you lock it in place on both sides. You have your uh, basin right here, little wash basin. You have a two burner cooktop there as well. But take a look at this. One of my favorite parts about this outside kitchen is on not just one, but both sides, you have these big uh, pull out prep spaces. And I think that's great. You, you just don't get the extra countertop space most times in an outside kitchen on a travel trailer. So this way you can prep your food here, throw it on your cooktop, and uh, you know, you're, you're a master chef in minutes. So uh, again, I really do like the, the way that they have set that up. And just like the front folks, this is magnetic as well, so you can just put it up and forget about it. So we come around to the back here. Uh, you'll notice right back here is your spare tire. Hopefully you never have to use this folks, but in the event that you do, it's riding right back here for you. It is very easy to get at. Now you'll notice it also doesn't have your square tubular bumper, but what they did uh, still give you is this right here, which is a storage location for your sewer hose. So, you know, you don't have to worry about your sewer hose rolling around with everything up front. Just unscrew that, you can put it right in there. And then you have your cable inlet right here. So we come around to the, uh, the off-door side here. There are a couple of features over here as well. Your terminations is right here in the back. You can see your gray and black valve there. That's the only termination, so you know, nice and easy to dump that one out. Directly above that is your black tank flush. This is beneficial too. Instead of having to take a hose in the RV and sticking it down your toilet to wash out your black tank when you're done camping, you just hook it up right there. The black tank has sprayers built in, and it does wash it out for you. 30 amp power cord right there. You just pull that guy out when you're done, shove it right back in there so you don't have to worry about detaching it or anything. Right out here is your outside shower with both hot and cold water access. So if you want outside uh, water besides on the outside kitchen, maybe you need to wash the dog or wash the kid's feet if they just got back from the beach, something like that, that's the place to do it. And then right up here are your water connections, both your city water inlet as well as your fresh tank fill. All right, folks, that wraps it up. Again, this is a 2018.5 Keystone Passport 239 ML. If you're interested in this RV and you'd like price and availability, simply click on the link in the description below. Thanks again for watching. I'm Ian Baker, and let's go camping.